Tippy time my damies, Top Cat here and welcome back to the channel. Ever since Beyond Light, when Bungie brought us Stasis, the subclass system has been upgraded, so now we have more flexibility with our builds than ever before. Stasis was super strong upon launch, they ironed out the kinks and then they brought out Void 3.0, which seemed even stronger again, and I didn't think it could get much better. And then Solar 3.0 came out, and this subclass just got even more destructive than Void. I'm like, how is this going to end, you know? Because Arc 3.0 came out, and I'm like, this is just crazy broken. So today's video is the first in a three-part series where we'll be starting off with our Titan. Now, what is the best subclass? Is there a best subclass? What mods am I going to want to run on my armor to make it versatile so I can run it on all these subclasses and in fact what is the best exotic for the titan in my opinion it quite possibly is the heart of inmost light this has the best for both ability spam and just has the best ebb and flow when it comes to using your abilities and making them so much stronger so the heart of inmost light overflowing light is the armor perk Using an ability, whether it's a grenade, melee, or barricade, empowers the other two abilities. Empowered means abilities have faster regen, which is very, very important. Melees and grenades do more damage, and your barricades have more hit points, so they can tank a lot more. I'm going to start off with Solar 3.0. This is a very destructive subclass, but it also has great heals in terms of cure, healing, and restoration. It was made famous by its baby bonk hammer strat with the shotgun but we were also introduced to the consecration melee this was so good because bungie gave us scorch which is just lethal but it turns out scorch was just the gateway drug of ignitions getting our scorch stacks and things are going to explode like a premature lap dance to make this happen we will be using the consecration solar aspect while sliding, activate your charge melee ability to launch a wave of solar energy forwards, damaging and scorching targets in front of you as you leap into the air. Whilst you're airborne, you then activate your charge melee again to slam into the ground. This will create a second larger wave that also damages with solar energy, and this wave hits scorch targets and ignites them. Seen here, I'm running a 1600 master campaign story solo at 20 under light, and it is still devastating. So, I'm running Soul Invictus over Roaring Flames as it didn't really feel I needed the extra strength. Solar ability final blows, hammer of soul impacts, and defeating scorched targets create sunspots. Your abilities regenerate faster, and your super drains more slowly while standing in sunspots. Sunspots apply Scorch that deal damage to targets inside and your Sunspots will also give you restoration. So this is very important in terms of keeping you alive when you're at these underleveled activities and as good as Scorched and Ignitions really are, I think restoration is the king to any solar build. When it comes to using the Heart of Immost Light on our Solar 3.0 Titan, we are going to have a different procession in terms of our abilities that we use for this. We are going to be starting with the Rally Barricade. I like this one because it has the shortest cooldown. The Solar Titan has to be offensive to be defensive. We will be using the Thermite Grenade. This has the most consistent levels of Scorch available to it, in my opinion. And we will be using the Baby Throwing Hammer, as this is not only great for bonking, but just good consistent melee charge given to us whenever we need it. The baby hammer is so good in in-game activity. Its repeatability is really good, so we just chuck the hammer, bonk something, kill it, pick it back up, and that's going to cure us, okay? It's also going to be dropping a well when we kill something, so that well is going to grant us healing through our mods that we're running on our armor, and it also drops the sunspot, so it's going to give us that permanent restoration that we want. So three forms of healing just by running around, bonking things with our little baby hammer. It's also really good on activities like this. We're in the 1600 Master Dungeon, and there's heaps of incendio packs around, so we don't always want to be using a Consecration melee. With healing in the bag, our fragments are going to be set up on Ignitions. So we are using Ember of Eruption, 
our solar ignitions have increased area of effect. Ember of Char, our solar ignitions spread Scorch to affected targets. Ember of Ashes, you apply more Scorch stacks to targets. And Ember of Searing, defeating Scorch targets grants melee energy back to us. And the melee energy is very important for this build as the Consecration is the headline act for the Solar Titan. That massive devastation of Scorching followed by Ignitions and we just continually loop this with this build. So we will never run out of Scorch. And with Scorch at the very bones of this build, we can also stack on top of this Incandescent. This is a perk that comes on certain solar weapons, and this is very good in in-game activity. I mean, stacking up Scorch on things makes them go kaboom. So we can use this, whether we chuck a grenade first, you know, put a little Scorch stack on them, then shoot them with our Scout or our BXR. I actually believe there's one for every weapon class now. We've got the Stride and Whistle on the bow, fixed odds, LMG, Amit for auto rifle, the Mini Miter for SMG, and the Drang for sidearm. So plenty of options there. For our mods, we're going to be running our Melee Wellmaker on our helmet, Elemental Ordnance, Explosive Wellmaker, and Well of Life, and a Seeking Wells on our chest piece. It's with this system of mods that we're going to allow ourselves to always have healing on no matter what build we run because healing really particularly in end game content is half the battle so if we can keep our health up we can go in here and just tank all this damage that all these guys are throwing at us i mean they're just barraging at it we are 20 under light and we are making it look piss easy so this mod system no matter what element we're on will be the same going forwards largely speaking so next up, we're going to take a look at our stasis build to see how the Hoyle works in this regards. So stasis is a little bit different compared to the other subclasses in that when it comes to match game, we can't really maximize its potential. But this is going to be different going forwards. Bungie have stated that there will be stasis shields coming shortly. We believe it is in light but they haven't specified this particularly. So for now, Stace is primarily really good in raids and dungeons. Now every 80s school ball might try and tell you that fire and ice couldn't be more different, but that's not quite the case. Solar and Stasis work quite similar. They both have a melee Stasis aspect. The Stasis one is Howl of the Storm. While sliding, activate your charge melee to launch a wave of Stasis energy towards that freezes targets and creates Stasis crystals. Tectonic Harvest, Shattering Stasis Crystals, creates Stasis Shards. These shards grant melee energy when picked up by both you and your allies. So the Howling Storm is going to be a powerful melee. And then the Tectonic Harvest is going to be the feedback loop that makes it work so well with the Heart of the Most Light. On top of that, we also get the Explosive Damage, so we get those Solar Wells. We will be using the Glacial Grenade, so you chuck this down. This creates large stasis block formations. You blow these up and these create burst damage. Very, very strong and very dominant in terms of positioning when you're running around the map, particularly in a tight little arena like this. I'm kind of like cordoning it off and that way I can kind of keep myself safe whilst inflicting massive damage to them. Both the Hell of the Storm and the Glacial Grenade work well with the Heart of the Most Light. So it has a little more freedom of which one you want to use in which order. The first fragment we will be using is Whisper of Rhyme. Collecting stasis shards grant a small amount of overshield, which falls off after 10 seconds. Collecting additional shards adds to the overshield and refreshes the timer. What I like about this is the tactical destruction of the stasis. We have the heals of the solar and we have the overshield of the void. We will be using Whisper of Rending, so our kinetic weapons to increase damage against stasis shards and frozen targets. The Wither Horde is excellent as this, as it just destroys these stasis formations, making it very easy. It's also very good in terms of ammo economy. You never seem to run out of Wither Horde ammo. Whisper of Shards, shattering a stasis crystal will temporarily boost the grenade recharge rate. Shattering additional stasis crystals increases duration of this benefit. Whisper of Fishes increases the damage and size of the burst of the stasis crystal when you destroy a stasis crystal that is next to an enemy. Now I personally think these are still really strong. Of course they were a lot stronger when Bungie first released it with Beyond Light, 
but because of PvP, it had to be dialed back, but I actually think it's still really good in terms of PvE content. I would say, however, it doesn't work well against Overload Champs, the whole freezing and slowing effect just bugs out, and I'm not sure if Bungie has intended this to happen, but it is the case. All our armor mods will stay the same with the exception of a helmet, we're swapping out the melee wellmaker for a font of might. I like this as I'm generally running dungeons and raids with this, and a little bit of extra DPS comes in handy, particularly with things like using our reads or regret, or the zephyr, it has a perk called cold steel, powered sword, attacks slow targets. Enough of these slow stacks actually freeze, and I find this particularly good when I'm trying to solo something, and I just need to slow them a little bit, delay them, and just do that little bit of extra damage because when you do freeze them and they break free of that that is free damage given to you so this build has plenty of destructive power plenty of heals and also has overshield but bear in mind this overshield is just for you if you want a more team focused overshield you want to run something like the void titan the void titan is the king the tank class he has overshields up the yin yang and he's such a great defensive player Void 3.0 was such a dominant change to the way that we even played a Void Titan as realistically the, the Bubble Titan had seen a little bit of a dip in playability but now with shields and overshields at the ready this just got so strong when it launched. And whilst using the Heart of Him Most Light you are never shy of abilities so you're never shy of that great shield that gives you the overshield and just makes it so safe to, particularly in Grandmaster content, not just for you, but for your allies as well. So to get this overshield, we will be using Bastion, Void Aspect. Cast your Super to grant overshield to nearby allies. Casting your Barricade grants overshield to yourself and nearby allies and empowers it, embedding it to slowly regenerate overshield to allies over time. Running the Heart of Inmost Light on the Void Titan is a little bit different to the Solar and Stasis ones, as we were empowering melees on those to make those nice and punchy. But on this one, I want a nice strong barricade, because the stronger that is, the more overshield we get, and that just allows us to stay alive that much longer. You can mix it up every now and again, you know, if you want that stronger melee or stronger grenade, but I generally want a nice strong barricade, so I can keep that overshield both for me and my allies. Offensive Bulwark, while you have an overshield or you're inside a water dawn, your grenade charges significantly faster. You have increased melee range and damage and your melee final blows extend the duration of your overshield. This works so well with the Heart of Most Light because it just allows you to bunker down behind your shield and that way you've always got your grenades and your melees there waiting ready to go so it's a very good defensive way to run the heart of a most light it's for this reason i like to run ranged abilities so when it comes to my grenade i've been running the magnetic grenade it's got great range blows up twice good devastating grenade i also run the shield throw so you check this out like captain america every time you hit things as well this also gives you overshield for every target that it hits and then, of course, we're going to be using the Towering Barricade for this build, as we want good defensive capabilities. And when you've got Overshields up the Yin Yang, it just turns you into the scrappy fighter. You know, you're not afraid to just dive straight into the middle of the Lion's Den and just go smack things around, you know. I get up there nice and tight, chuck a shield down, you know, everything gets caught in the crossfire, gets blinded, just opens up a window so I can just go around, chuck some abilities, break shields and get that resist that is so strong now the way i run the fragments because we're running the heart of inmost light i'm setting up for echo of persistence this will extend the duration of our overshield echo of undermining our void grenades weaken targets and echo of instability defeating targets with your grenades grant volatile rounds to your void weapons a great weapon is the Unforgiven with Repulsor Brace, but there are many weapons that do have Repulsor Brace on it. This gives us Overshield when we defeat things that have been debuffed with our Void. So our grenades have the Weaken, and we also have Volatile Rounds, so we're always just stacking up that Overshield when we're getting weapon kills as well. Obviously, whenever we have Overshield, that's also increasing our Grenade Recharge and our melee damage as well. 
all of our armor mods are going to stay the same with the exception of our helmet. On my helmet I'm running a Well of Tenacity Elemental mod. So when we pick up a Void Elemental Well, this reduces the incoming damage that we take from combatants for a short period of time. This is just a 5 second window, but it is a nice strong damage resist. And because we're always spamming those shields, like the next weapon kill is going to come very frequent. So it's always going to be dropping another Void Well for us. And then on top of that we also have our elemental ordnance so we get void wells from grenade final blows as well so we've kind of always got that overshield up always got that resist up so very tanky subclass stack on top of that our volatile rounds and we can just dish out and take at the same time so now with the heart of the most light we've taken a look at our solar stasis and void subclasses but what about arc i mean coming into arc 3.0 i wasn't all that excited but <laughs> I was quite surprised at how strong this actually is. I've always struggled a little bit because its trees were a little bit weak. They had strong elements, but not all combined into one. So now that we can combine them all into one, we can actually make some stupidly strong arc subclasses. I don't know what it is about the arc 3.0 and the heart of a most light, but they just seem to work so well together. Like the devastation really does feel to be stepped up to the nines and I'd highly recommend giving this arc one a go. We had the storm grenade that previously was warlock exclusive. Now we have it on the titan and it's stupid strong. We have a new melee called the thunderclap. You charge it up like a superman and just smack it in their face in a devastating wave attack. And then we had the thruster, the new class ability, essentially dodge for titans. And it's because of this thruster perk that I think the arc version of the heart of the most light might be my favorite build. I'm not sure if it's the best, you know, they're all situational depending on, you know, the shields that you're facing in, in a GM, for example, or in the raid, you know, what type of ads are coming at you, but it definitely feels more enjoyable and more engaging as instead of just pausing your gameplay when you're putting down a barricade, you're just doing a little dodge and you feel like you're in the action more, so it is a lot more enjoyable for that reason. Now... I think it might also be the strongest in terms of DPS as well, because we are using Touch of Thunder. This arc aspect is going to beef up our Storm Grenade. So after Storm Grenade detonates, it creates a thunder cloud that roams around, tracks targets. The knockout aspect, so when we critically wound a target, breaking their shields, infuses our melee with arc energy. This increases your melee range and damage for a short time. Also, when you defeat a target with this melee it also gives you a chunk of health back so not only are you devastating things really well you're also getting health back in return there is an awful lot of good arc 3.0 builds out there but i have to say this is probably my most enjoyable one i've been using it this week at 20 under light just in preparation for gms is there an awful lot of arc singe gms there so i'm definitely going to be taking that in there to farm it out i'm going to be running spark of shock so our arc grenades jolt, spark a resistance, so when we're surrounded by combatants we can just tank more with 30% damage resistance. Spark of ions, defeating jolted targets will send ionic traces to us to get those ability energy back. And spark of magnitude, which is just going to make those storm grenades last even longer so they can just grunt out all the ads in the field. So with this Heart of Immos build, you definitely want to lead off with the thruster dodge, followed up by the slap in the face with the ballistic punch and then you want to chuck that meaty storm grenade it lasts forever and by the time you do that rotation again you're going to have another storm grenade you can almost have like two or three of them up on the field at any given moment i've been using the wish ender with this you know it's got anti-barrier and then our grenades we've got overload grenades this season as well so this is great as it frees up the gauntlets to chuck some mods on to further improve my ability spam. So I like this. And there's so many overloads and arc singes in GMs this season. So yeah, this build is definitely going to be putting in some work for me. For the mods, they're going to be much the same as all the other ones. On our helmet, we are rocking the melee wellmaker. Gauntlets, we are running elemental ordnance. Focusing strike to get more class ability when we smack things with our melee and bolstering detonation more class ability when we smack things with our grenade. Seeking wells, sniper damage resist for our GMs, and thermoshock plating for reduction of solar and arc damage. Explosive wellmaker again, 
well of life surge detonators for our overload and bad amplitude just for another jolt on those grenades this setup of mods and the heart of the most light will work on all these subclasses but i don't know guys what do you think is the best subclass is it arc arc's definitely a lot of fun this season but then you know restoration with solar that's pretty decent Opal shields on void very good both for you and your allies and who knows stasis might be great in light ball so ugh, it's, it's a tough one i don't know leave a comment down below let me know what you think but no matter what's heart of most light easily the best titan exotic in my opinion anyway my damage that is the video for today if you did enjoy it please smash that thumbs and until next time tippy time my damies what a tie